I know that spring can look and feel very different in different parts of the world, but I want to honor that very fragile moment of very, very early spring when it's neither here or there. All right, to provide some relief to, <laughs> to your budget, I'm going to show you a real cheap one that I absolutely love. This is a cheapy that to me signifies the glory of all days in Burberry perfumes. They had such good selection back in the early 2000s. To be frank, I don't know what, what's happening with Burberry sort of perfume strategy because all of these attempts to make Baccarat Rouge on cheap with the syn synthetic strawberry liquid sugar notes, eh, I don't know. I wish they went back to their roots, to the amazing Burberry bases that were so recognizable and beloved. This is like the luxury, the refined British luxury at its finest. And the one that I want to show you today that I absolutely love, this is the Burberry take on lavender. This is Burberry Brit Rhythm. They have again probably like 10 flankers of different kinds. Burberry Brit Rhythm, that one. Oh, so good. It's just... It's something that it makes every morning perfect. This is a dream of a office job. You know, like not the actual days in office <laughs> that a, a lot of people dread, this nine to five drudgery, but this is the dream. This is like the, right before you finish the university and you're like desperate for your first job and you're thinking about what could my career be like? And that's what you imagine it smells like. Put together, refined, floral, refreshing, soft, spicy. Lavender doesn't dominate, but still shapes these uh, particular olfactory profile at its heart. It's just, you know, it's like buying all new clothes, going your first day to work to some like incredibly big company, your dream job. You went through so many interviews, you, you sent so many applications and this is it. This is your big official gig in the world of corporate lives of pencil skirts and silk blouses. This is what it smells to me. This is like, you know, like this, like a young professional dream. Love it. It does, it does help me get through some of the days when I just don't want to get out of bed and I dread going to work. Yep, love it. Highly, highly recommend as long as you like lavender but struggle to make it wearable in your uh, perfume collection. Uh, again, if that's the case, I can make a separate video about all the lavender scents and talk about different ways how you can layer lavender or different types of lavender in the, in, in the perfumes. If you're curious, let me know and we'll talk, we'll talk about it in the separate video. But for early, for early spring, when you really want like a pick me up, kind of hopeful, youthful, easy to wear and yet delightful perfume, Burberry Brit Rhythm. You can find it for like $17 online, worth every penny. Okay, now we're getting to a similar case, but a little bit more of a... It's like silk pajamas in the kitchen, making your avocado toast when you're, uh, when you're taking an artistic sabbatical kind of scent. So this is Niche. Uh, L'Artisan Parfumé, one of my favorite niche brands. Luckily, luckily, Sephora carried it for a long time. I don't understand why they let L'Artisan Parfumeur go. I think the L'Artisan Parfumeur deserve to, deserves to continue to be a mainstream brand. If any niche brand deserved to become mainstream, that's this. Because this is the kind of easy breezy cologne-like sophistication that makes everyday life worth living. <laughs> So the one that I'm recommending for early spring is the softest, easiest saffron perfume to wear. If you heard about the saffron as a note in fragrances, beware, not the easiest thing to combine with other scents. I do find that a lot of perfumes that are centric with so-called saffron note 
are either really weird or odd or too close to kitchen you know in terms of like it just smells like somebody's cooking something not the easiest nose note to wrap well so saffron to blonde true blonde by l'artisan parfumé is again this light sketch of a soft spicy perfume it's this kind of caressing kitchen spices I don't know how they made it work but yeah like it it's light it's unfortunately more of a cologne or eau de toilette I wouldn't expect it to have um, any density or richness or longevity but if you're looking for something again spicy gourmand without the sweetness at all like give me the spices but don't burn my nose with peppers or paprikas or you know or like dry like dry mediterranean spices don't take me to like an indian spice market give me something that is very distilled european modern contemporary with allure right like with the echo of of soft spices that would be it saffron troublon it's truly a flute melody uh, inspired by saffron and kitchen spices so light so easy to wear again i don't want to say that it's nutty but it has that kind of roundness that nutty notes bring to fragrances highly recommend uh it is really cheap to buy online if you know where to shop so keep it in mind keep it in mind the next one has had a fortune to appear in over three of my videos and this is la mia perla by la perla first of all i absolutely absolutely adore the bottle it's very creative it's like an optical illusion with invisible um straw though I, I think these are just cool it's really really awesome and this is the most huggable the most kissable perfume that I have in my collection a lot of people describe it as a a, a vanilla ice cream like a scoop of vanilla ice cream with just sprinkled with some dry nutmeg, nutmeg powder It is sweet without being sickly or cloying. It is spicy without you noticing a single spice. This is just soft, spicy floral. Imagine taking soft, very clean musk, wrapping it with ambroxan, adding some pink suede, white, the like sprinkles of white pepper, just a tinge of soft florals, some like light spring, light florals maybe a little bit of peony with jasmine very like just a tinge wrapping it with sandalwood and just making a huge pink fluff ball out of it this is la mia perla by la perla second to last is the perfume for the times in early spring when i really need some positive reassurance that that spring will come summer will come everything will be fine Pull, pull yourself together, it's, you're gonna be fine. Something that both puts, pulls you together, uplifts you, but still in a comfortable, caressing way, I go for Chinado di Liguria by Aqua di Parma. So here, the whole fragrance is built on, on the note of Chinoto, which is, as far as I know, is like a bitter Italian, uh, it's kind of like a wild orange tree and it has this really thick glossy green leaves Ginota di Liguria is surprisingly recent it's um, it was issued in 2018 and it's part of the Mediterranean line by Aqua di Parma um, I would completely if I were you I would completely ignore any of their markers of women men like they're all they're all unisex as basically all perfumes really are like you just you know if you like the smell you like the smell that's it like there is no female tomato or male tomato 
or female chamomile or male chamomile. It's all it's all whatever pleases your nose. So Chinota di Liguria to me is this incredibly rounded and heavier form of citruses because a lot of the citrusy perfumes when we hear citrusy notes we think of this sparkly kind of cologne like um, very light zesty notes this is not that at all so this think about the like if you take if you peel the orange skins and you condense them into oil this is what kind of citrus I smell here. It's very dense, sweet, as almost like uh, orange oil, with some of these more mature, kind of like denser green notes, which I think are represented by patchouli and musk. And I, I want to say it has some kind of woodiness in it, but I, it actually doesn't have any wood notes in the pyramid. But for some reason to me, I do feel some kind of like woody base in there. Maybe it's just a combination of cardamom and other notes together that get, give me that impression. Maybe that's Chinoto itself. But it's basically like, it, <laughs> for some reason makes me want to drink like some kind of cocktail it's just it's like positive but also dense and strong so it, it really accomplishes the mission of both warming me up with optimism and hope for rich delightful summer full of light heat and bountiful plenty but also still pulls me together because it's not sickly sweet, it's not sparkly citrusy either. It's very centric, it's very heart-centric perfume. You know, like some perfumes are really heavy on their base, some perfumes are really light, it's almost all, all of the profile is those zesty, light, uh, flying away notes. This, I would say, the perfume that is right in the middle, it's, it doesn't have a lot of head space, it doesn't have a lot of top notes, it doesn't have a lot of heavy base to it as well, it's just all there in the middle. Yep, highly recommend for you to try. I do find that this is the one who is good all year round, but on the moments when I feel that all of that naked fragility of early spring and the bareness of the colors and the lack of color and smells in the transition period when I really feel like it actually starts bringing me down rather than inspiring any <laughs> any kind of poetic moods and I need more uplifting yet strong centric scent usually I use Chinobre de Liguria and the last one I wanted to bring up is Shalimar Souffle. Souffle de Parfum. I partially wanted to bring it up because I again want to mention one of my favorite fragrance reviewers here on YouTube, Sarah Mays. If you haven't checked out her channel, please do. She is a delightful uh, delightful video channel. She is very open about exploring new perfumes and fragrances. By no means she is a snob. And I think that brings a very refreshing, easy to easy on the eye, easy on the ear honesty to the video content on YouTube. It's truly refreshing because I find that the more we as bloggers or just generally perfume enthusiasts, enthusiasts sink into the, the black hole of different olfactory profiles, the, the more desanitized we become to silk and pleasures and the it's almost like it takes more provocation more something you know like to surprise us to really impress us and i find that sarah's sarah's content is always so evenly warm-hearted but also grounded grounded in in reality of how we wear perfumes of of what our lives like it's it doesn't go too far into this like hyper luxe niche category when we only talk about 
you know, if, if we get sponsored by Parfums de Marley or Amouage or, you know, Ra Raja Parfums and like, and like those hyper, hyper, hyper luxe brands or it's only the Sephora where, you know, like any, any moment you stray away from La Vie Belle or Prada Candy, you're just like, okay, that's too boring, it's, it's too complex, I, I can't deal with it. I, I find that Sarah's channel provides a little bit of everything in a very accessible and friendly way. There's like zero condescension or any kind of perfume snobbery there. So again, highly recommend you visit her channel because she was the one who actually reminded me that I have this perfume in my collection. Uh, the Shelly Marsoufel uh, was featured in her, I think, transitional weather or fragrances. I don't remember how exactly the video was called, but she was talking about exactly that type of weather where we're neither here or there. When nature is transitioning, when their schedules are transitioning, when everything seems to be kind of saying goodbye to the old but the new hasn't yet come. So I agree, the Shalimar Sufu to me has nothing to do with classic Shalimar. Like I almost wish they just called it a separate scent, gave it its own name and called it a day because it's truly confusing to a lot of people. It was confusing to me when I started really exploring the kind of like 20th century classics, including Shalimar. And I bought this and I was like, that is not Shalimar. I understand this is a flanker, so it's a variation on the classic, but it has so little in common <laughs> with the original Shalimar. Well, maybe the vanilla note, but like, come on. It's like one of the probably the most favorite, like the most popular, the most common notes in any mm, fragrance formula. Let's uh, refresh my memory. Okay. To be honest, I don't feel citruses here almost at all. As bright as they are in classic Shalimar, and especially Eau de Shalimar and Shalimar Cologne, here, I would say that rather opens like a watery floral, like the, the lightest parts of this fragrance I would call a watery floral. And almost immediately I get this kind of I don't want to mean it in a bad way, but like a synthetic vanilla with kind of rounded sweetness and very delicate muskiness somewhere in the base. Very subtle, very delicate. What's really interesting about this one is quiet and rounded and simple, to be honest, as it seems to me, it's very long lasting. So this is why I call it like an ideal office scent. Not too much, not too little, not too simple, not too sophisticated. It doesn't really interfere with my mood at all. It just creates this pleasant, put together, contemporary kind of vanilla floral atmosphere around me. And it lasts all day, at least on me, at least five hours. Again, you can refresh it if you want to, that's no problem. So yeah, like I will finish with this one because to me this is a truly quintessential transitional perfume. That means that it's good for any occasion, any time, might be not a good for extreme, like might be not perfect for extreme temperatures or not perfect for any particular occasion, but this is like a workhorse of daily perfumes that will always make you feel mm, I don't want to say classy, but you know, put together. Um, it, you will not feel embarrassed or too little or too much when you're wearing this. All right, so this, this was my selection of early spring fragrances. Again, I just want to reiterate, I really don't like when when we collectively or like culturally just skip seasons all together, right? Like when you, when you see, <laughs> like Halloween decorations pop up in July, uh, Christmas makeup and fragrance releases appearing in September, you know, like in yada yada yada, like Easter decorations in February and things like that. I do enjoy 
finding beauty and enjoying things in now in in the subtleties not shrinking the whole year to summer vacation and christmas break you know there's way more to our seasons to our moods and to our transition through life than that in my not so humble opinion so i refuse <laughs> to uh i refuse to reduce all of the spring into mimosas, tulips, and, and florals. Let's enjoy the bareness of early spring first, and then, soon enough, we'll talk about the late blooming, flamboyant, hopeful, and romantic spring fragrances. So if you have any recommendations of your own, please let me know in the comments. I'm writing everything down. I'm like stacking up my wish list to when my no buy year is gonna be over. I'm looking for decants. Like if you wanna exchange a few perfumes, decants between us, that's allowed in my no buy year rules. Purchases though are not. So let me know. Very excited to see uh, and to hear what you think about this and I'll see you in the new video. Bye.